than we had the last few weekends. Thanks. Thanks, Peter yeah, Barnes. Okay, guys. Well, let's talk to a congressman who voted today against the bill. Republican Trent Franks of Arizona voted against the rescue package on Monday, did so again today. Uh, congressman, I, I read some of your comments. You're suggesting that we're getting into the practice of nationalizing bad debt. We can't do that forever, can we? No, sir, I don't think we can. Uh, I think that uh, the unfortunate part about this particular situation, and at the risk of sounding partisan right off the bat here, the Democrats control the process here where we didn't have an opportunity to really amend this bill and do the kinds of things in the open debate uh, that could have made it a much, much better bill. I'm convinced that over time, between Monday and today, it was improved. Uh, but unfortunately, we didn't get an, an open chance to debate this thing, and, and I'm concerned that uh, if the unthinkable happens and Barack Obama becomes president, that this will just be the first step into nationalizing our economy, and I think that would be a tragedy beyond description. Representative Franks, uh, in the last hour we spoke with a Democratic congressman, uh, Congressman Payne, and he was saying that he too voted against it, uh, perhaps for different reasons. He said that there was so much that had been thrown into the Senate bill by, yes, some Republicans and some Democrats as well, but none of it had to do with, with helping people that were the type of people who needed the help in his district, like the people in the city of Newark, New Jersey. Do you see that point of view? Well, I do. Uh, I think that uh, the tax provisions that were put in the bill were made primarily to try to, to get uh, enough people to support the underlying bill. And ironically, some, most of the tax provisions I thought were good ones. I probably would have voted from the, for them separately. But in, in the reality here, Liz, in the, in the final postmortem, if, if journalists, and I say this with absolute respect, uh, if journalists will do their job and do the postmortem in an unbiased way, they will find one fundamental reality, and that is that the center of this explosion was Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and they had been backed by government, and the explosion killed a lot of bystanders. And there was one voice that warned us about all of that, and that was John McCain. He was one of three sponsors on S-190. If we had done what he told us to do, this entire debacle could have been prevented. But he was and I know smart. that sounds partisan, but that's the truth. Well, Congressman, uh, let's talk a little bit about what happened to Fannie and Freddie, also what happened to AIG. We're, we, you, you criticized the nationalization of debt. We have also been seeing of equities as well in the form of Fannie and Freddie and possibly what might happen to AIG. Does that concern you? And if so, what do you plan to do about it? Well, of course it does. You may know that I voted against the, the bill to, to uh, further nationalize Freddie Mac and, and Fannie Mae that took place here a month or two ago uh, because I'm convinced that this is just a slippery slope. And you know, I have children, and I want them to walk in the sunlight of freedom, not in the shadow of socialism. And I know there were a lot of people that voted yes for this bill today because of the importunity of the situation. They understood that the economy had reached a very uh, critical stage, and somewhat of that, as part of that was because of the hyperbole that was used in the entire debate. But the bottom line was we needed to act. I just feel like we, we really uh, used the wrong prescription here to, to cure the the disease and I just hope somehow that we can regain our footing and I hope we can put a, an adult in the White House and John McCain that will kind of pull this situation back to a, a common sense uh, approach and get some accountability here where we can realize that it was free enterprise and the markets that gave us the greatest economy in the, on the face of the earth and in the human really in human history and unfortunately okay. this entire challenge is because we got too too much government in, in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, although John McCain the senator uh, was for this bill I would I would say but we're joined what, what, in this, this discussion hold on yeah. one second because you'll get a chance yeah. to talk about that is Ed Perlmutter a Democrat from Colorado who voted yes um, we've just been speaking with representative Franks about why he voted Voted no. Tell us why you voted yes on this. I voted yes because we were in a very urgent situation and this was the lesser of two evils. We had a situation where the banking system was basically shutting down both at the highest levels with the biggest companies all the way down to a little taxi company that I came in to support a couple days ago. This, this is something that was spreading very quickly and we had to act in a very quick fashion. And, you know, Trent can point at Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. I can point at the fact that we dropped a lot of regulations that really were designed back in the, de the Depression as part of the New Deal to put some brakes on the uh, financial markets. And the Glass-Steagall Act was dropped, and that allowed for investment banks to become banks and insurance companies to do all that. As a result, we compounded whatever kind of real estate market uh, contraction there was. So. There's a lot of blame to go around, and yeah. I appreciate my friend from Arizona's comments, but 
there are a lot of things to look at, but we had to take urgent action. Now, well, Congressman, Congressman things... Perlmutter, let me just ask you, though, you, you, you mentioned the end of Glass-Steagall, which, of course, was done during the Clinton administration. Uh, is, under, is, should under, we... under a Republican Congress. Yeah, but it was Treasury Secretary under Rubin, who was a great Congress. Treasury Secretary, lobbied very heavily for it. But the point is, if, if, we, uh, if that was a mistake, should we re-erect that barrier between commercial and financial institutions? I, there, you know, when you take a depositor's money, and in this instance it was a lot of money markets, and you then leverage the heck out of them based on a belief that real estate prices always go up, you're going to have a problem. And we had something similar back in Colorado, and I know Arizona did too, back in the 80s and early 90s where the savings and loans failed. I mean, we we should know better to, than to just drop safeguards that we have okay. in the financial system. Representative so, Franks, I wanted know, to get, hold on. Let's let Representative Franks get in here, and and you wanted to comment sure. on. Uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna the surprise fact that Senator McCain I'm, had, had voted for it. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna surprise, I'm sur surprise Mr. Congressman Perlmutter and tell him that I do agree. Okay. In many cases, this was a choice between the two, two, uh, the lesser of two evils. But it really didn't have to be that way. If we had right. open debate, I think we could have come up with a. Situation. That's not his fault. That's the leadership's fault. But ultimately, it was indeed John McCain that told us uh, what was going to happen, and we didn't listen. And it happened almost exactly as he said. And I just hope that somehow we can get his perspective in this uh, postmortem, okay. and that we can Guys, kind of get it. We got to leave it at that, Congressman right. Trent Franks, Congressman Ed Perlmutter. Thanks to both of you. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. And